Yeah, good morning. Uh, it's a Sunday morning, it's dry. And, oh, the other day when I was doing maintenance, I noticed I have a loose track pad. And um, I was pretty disappointed in that. I hope it hadn't gone on too long. I was on some really tough, rocky ground. I think it, I hope it may have loosened up on that one. Anyhow, um, I'm going to take this opportunity on a Sunday to get it taken care of. And, uh, so that'll mean uh, eating the nuts and spinning the old bolts out and uh, removing the pads and uh, cleaning the pet bottom of the pad, the top of the rail, and uh, then re rebolting it. I've never had good luck keeping, you know, uh, track bolts tight after a pad has loosened up. But I'm going to do everything I can, uh, sand the, the, you know, the bottom of the pad, the top of the rail. I'm going to Loctite it um, with Loctite Red and, uh, you know, torque it correctly. It's a torque to yield bolt. So, anyhow, um, hopefully the weather will cooperate and I uh, thought you guys might want to ride along with it. So, off we go. Yeah, so I rolled the track ahead so the pad in question was sitting right behind the front idler, you know, and there's a space below it. Made it easier to clean the mud out of the rail. This steel bar is something I've used um, on several different machines for working on um, track bolts. And, it works really well. The uh, it's an eight-sided hex handle, and it's tapered so you can drive it in there. And uh, you'll see I use it to um, push the the nut up against the rail. You know, since it's loosened up, the bolt is boogered up. But you know, by by using that bar, you can drive it up in there and uh, hold it as tight as possible. And uh, it also gives a little support to that small chisel I use to drive in against the face of the nut. And that basically locks it in place. So all those and heating it, you can see it, it works pretty slick. Yeah, you know, I opt to heat them and spin the bolts out rather than cutting them. I, you know, there's always a chance you can kind of compromise the integrity of the chain itself or the rail by cutting it. So if you do it right, they really come out pretty easy, you know, so I like to do it this way. Can be anyhow. Yeah, so really the main thing with putting them back together again is to to uh, make sure everything's polished and clean. There's absolutely no grit of any kind or a little bump that's worn up or something that can make it seem like it's tight, but it would loosen up and then you're loose again. So. I'm still not quite sure what happened with these, but uh, um, yeah, I've, I actually have another pad. This is a really good tool. That's a plumbing tool. I've got several different sizes. Um, you know, that's designed for cleaning copper pipe, but that works really good for cleaning, you know,
bore holes or uh, like if you chase threads, you can kind of spin that brush down in there and clean the grit out too. So. Yeah, so I had an up, a, a one pad loosen up <coughs> here a while ago on the other side. And the only thing I can think of is that it might be the master link, which isn't, you can't really tell what that is. It's not like one of those two-piece jaw type connectors. And uh, so anyhow, this one that we're washing um, the replacement on, I've got, I think, just over 500 hours on it and I check it every Friday and it's it's tight so it seems to be holding up that bridge out now I can sand it down yeah, so this is another good tool from Harbor Freight. You just can't beat them on some things. That, that little uh, soft um, hook and eye disc and um, will take, you know, sanding or grip style um, discs. It's only like five bucks. And for this polishing, you know, I'm using a flapper wheel for the grinding, but then I use that soft disc you know, to actually polish it up, kind of sand it down. Works really well. Yeah, I put this on here and then I realized I wanted to polish up the mating surface of the top of the pad for where the bolts are going to touch it. I didn't have that set of furred files for this. I was using another one. But I used them on this other one that loosened up that I saw, found couple weeks ago. Work to yield application. So the bolts, what I'm going to do is torque them to 330 foot pounds and then it, it gets a one third of a turn beyond that. And so in effect what that's doing is it's stretching the threads out so it's torquing to yield the bolt so the bolt is holding itself in so once they're used they're done i mean um everything's clean you know we've polished it and you know smoothed the surfaces as best we can we put new bolts and fasteners and it's um once a pad has loosened up it's I've never had good luck making them stay tight again. But I'm going to do everything I can. We'll see what happens. By marking that pad, I'll know if I'll be able to keep an eye on it. You know, we got 6,000 hours on the machine. Uh, so this is locked tight. So this works as a lubricant remove them but it, 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 it's anaerobic it will seal and um, lock them in place now what i'm doing is putting grease here at the turning mating surface so that we get an accurate moment. There's no friction there. Yeah, well, <clears throat> obviously there I can't think and talk and work at the same time. What I was trying to say was what I'm doing is um, lubing up with grease the mating surface of the bolt to reduce any friction. And the thing about that uh, torque to yield is it's like a physical measurement. It's not actually torque based and so you you know that's why it's okay it doesn't affect it to use uh, loctite which is a lubricant and you can do everything you can to reduce your friction like grease underneath the mating surface of the bolt um, and not affect the torque because it's a physical measurement of the amount of rotation on the threads so 
that's that's a really cool thing, and um, I I like to think that it's going to hold together. Like I said, I've got 500 hours on it now, and uh, um, it, they, I check them every Friday just with a half inch breaker bar, but they're they're snug and uh, it's it seems to be holding up good. I used the three-quarter gun on this, and it really, that three-quarter gun, it, it, it impressed me so much. And uh, thanks to Mike Schmaley for uh, letting me borrow it um, again. But uh, I did go ahead and pick up uh, a three-quarter gun and a 12-amp hour battery. It's a real workhorse. And it's a little bit smaller. You always got to worry about space in a service truck. And, so uh, yeah, I, it's a very impressive thing. It's a very impressive tool. Happy I got it. Yes, yeah, so I just run them down. You'll see that I'm gonna hit them with a torque wrench. I know a lot of you guys know exactly what I'm doing here, so don't please don't be offended by me kind of explaining that to maybe somebody that doesn't have any kind of clue. I'm not trying to talk down to anybody. Quick signifies tool. Yeah, so this was definitely the worst part of the project. Uh, I talked to Ben, who's a service manager at Triad, who's a hell of an asset. I always appreciate his help he gives me, and he explained, you know, what I needed to do, and and. Uh, I didn't really think it was going to be that big a deal. A lot of the bolts and fasteners, you know, and, and, you know, some that go to four, uh, let's see, four fifty. So three thirty didn't seem too bad. And grabbing another third of a turn seemed like it would be kind of a piece of a cake, but uh, it was not. And one uh, trick that I did on the other pad that I did just recently really helped a lot, and that is that I. Uh, I cleaned up the threads with a needle file so they, they just spun on like like honey. And that made a big difference in the torque to yield. I recommend doing that. I think they ship them in barrels. A lot of times the threads get a little bit dinged up. This is something I also use that worked really well. It's just super simple. You know, it's a six-headed bolt, so if you draw a line, you know, imaginary line across the top of the bolt from point to point, you know, that's splitting it into thirds. And uh, so I'm, I'm marking one of those points, and then I'm using, you know, that other line to mark it on the pad itself for what's going to be a third of a turn. So you can, you know, you can get on it and bring it around, bring it home. So I started out with my uh, snap-on. Boy, I've had that thing for, oh, I don't know how many decades, but half or three-quarter drive snap-on breaker bar. And um, a, my, a single pipe for that. And I could tell in short order that wasn't going to take it. So you can see me kind of scratching my head. And I finally dug out the, uh, I got a one-inch proto. And uh, so I dug that out, and uh, I ended up using uh, both pipes on that. So I was pulling almost uh, eight feet, and uh, I got them, got them to where they, where I needed them. But it, it came pretty hard. It's I, I think Ben said that the, the check torque on this um, is fourteen hundred pounds, and so a, a check torque value is not moving it, it's just making sure it's still tight. So I don't know what exactly the real, true torque is, but it could be 2,500 pounds or something like that. I've got a torque multiplier that I carry in the truck, but one of the difficulties of using that I've found is you gotta have a secure you know, restraint for the energy bar and uh, on the what I had here, I just didn't have that. And uh, I've got a lot of respect for those torque multipliers. And I want to make sure that, that uh, 
energy bar is well rooted. So I just manhandled this one through and, and uh, got it to where I needed it. So came out good. So yeah, any questions or comments? I'd love to hear from people with experience on the two Milwaukee guns. And hope you enjoyed it. You can see my marks lined up there. Yeah, so thanks for watching. Got it done. I got the. You know, I took these down as recommended. I pulled them down to 330 foot pounds, the torque wrench, and then a third of a turn to torque them to yield. And I'll tell you what, that last third of a turn come pretty hard. But, you know, like I said, um, I've never had very good luck keeping pads that have loosened tight, but um, I've done everything I possibly can. Um, as you saw, and uh, they are torqued correctly. So um, I did put a mark, three. I, I ground three marks on the outside of the pad, so that way I can keep an eye on it. And uh, I have Loctited them. Generally, track bolts are put in dry, but I wanted every possible advantage I could get. And uh, so I'm not going to put a wrench on them. <laughs> if they do happen to loose up, I'll probably uh, do the same thing, take them out, put them back in. So There's a little elongation on the front two holes, which are closer to the grouser itself. Not surprised in the amount of torque this machine puts on the ground. So, But anyhow, it was a success. Um, I want to thank Mike again for the use of his tools. And uh, if any of you guys have experience with the, uh, the Milwaukee three-quarter gun, <coughs> and or uh, the one inch gun, so that's the 2867 or the 2864. Um, I would really be interested in hearing about it. I'd, I've been leaning towards a bigger gun too, because I need it and um, I love my half inch, but um, in this instance here, I borrowed both of them from Mike at the shop, which I appreciate. And uh, um, neither one of them would take this down to the final tour. Uh, with a 12 amp hour battery fully, fully charged. So um, I'm just kind of curious what other guys' experiences. So, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.